Committee will please come to order. A quorum is present. The committee meets today to pursuant to notice to consider eight bills and a resolution. The chair announces that requests for recorded votes as to amendments may be postponed pursuant to clause two of rule 11 of the House of the Rules of the House of Representatives and committee rule 14B. Without objection, the chair may recess the committee at any point. The committee is meeting today to consider a collection of nine significant legislative proposals. These bills underscore the committee's commitment to the education, safety, and security of our children and our communities. Seeing as we have a packed agenda before us, I will quickly introduce each bill and highlight its importance, though without respect to the particular order in which the specific pieces of legislation will be considered. Also on the agenda is H.R. 7227, the Truth and Healing Commission on Indian Boarding School Policies Act, which establishes a commission to investigate and address the historical impacts of Indian boarding school policies. This commission will be a bipartisan effort to unearth the jarring history of Indian boarding schools and their potential violations of American Indian rights. Thank you. For the, with that, I yield to the ranking member for an opening statement. Thank you, Madam Chair, and good morning. Today, the committee is considering nine bills, and I'm pleased that the committee has decided to take up several bipartisan bills, one of which improves the lives of our country's frontline health care workers, and the other that seeks to examine the impacts of history on Jewish and Native American communities. Third bipartisan bill we'll consider is 7227, the Truth and Healing Commission on Indian Boarding School Policies Act. This bipartisan bill was introduced by representatives uh, Cherise Davis of Kansas and Tom Cole of Oklahoma, and it established a commission to investigate, document, and report on the histories of, of Indian boarding schools, the abuse of policies and practices, and its impact on our indigenous communities and their descendants. We held a hearing on this important and long overdue bill when I was chairman, and I'm glad that Chairwoman Fox has decided to move this bill today. As members of Congress, it's imperative that we acknowledge the federal government's role in the systemic decimation of indigenous people in the United States, and this measure is long over overdue, and I'm pleased to support the legislation. We'll now move to consider the next bill. The committee will now proceed the consideration of the bill H.R. 7227 for amendment. The bill was circulated in advance and printed copies are available. The clerk shall designate the bill. H.R. 7227, a bill to establish the Truth and Healing Commission on Indian Boarding School Policies in the United States and for other purposes. Without objection, the first reading of the bill is dispensed with. Without objection, the bill will be considered as read and open for amendment at any point, and any amendment offered shall be considered as read. Uh, Mr. Kiley, for what purpose do you seek recognition? Madam Chair, I have an amendment at the desk titled H.R. 7227, ANS 01. The clerk shall designate the amendment in the nature of a substitute. Amendment in the nature of a substitute to H.R. 7227 offered by Mr. Kiley of California. Identifier H.R. 7227, ANS underscore 01. Without objection, the amendment shall be considered original text for purposes of further amendment. The amendment in the nature of a substitute has already been distributed. I now recognize Congressman Kiley for five minutes to explain the amendment in the nature of a substitute. Thank you, Madam Chair. I would like to offer an amendment in the nature of a substitute for the Truth and Healing Commission on Indian Boarding School Policies Act of 2024, which would establish a Truth and Healing Commission on Indian Boarding School Policies in the United States to investigate, document, and report on the histories of Indian boarding schools, Indian boarding school policies, and the long-term effects of those schools and policies on Native Americans. From 1819 to 1969, tens of thousands of Indian children were taken away from their families and sent to Indian boarding schools across the United States, the majority of which were run or funded by the U.S. government. Students experienced abuse, malnutrition, and disease. They were forced to change their names cut their hair, and were beaten for speaking their native language. These children 
These schools caused immense trauma for the students and families, some of whom never saw their children again. Some children even died. The Department of Interior has identified bur burial sites at 53 different schools, accounting for over 500 deaths. It is important to ensure that nothing like this ever happens again. And the way to do that is to objectively search for and show the truth. Documenting these stories will also allow survivors to share their experiences and honor those who have passed away. I'm proud to co-sponsor this legislation, and I urge its passage today. I yield back. Are there any mem other members who wish to be recognized for further discussion on the amendment in the nature of a substitute? Madam Chair. Ms. Leisure Fernandez, you're recognized for five minutes. So thank you, Madam Chair. I move to strike the last word. You're recognized. <laughs> for generations, Native American children were torn from their parents, torn from their culture, torn from their homelands, and forced into boarding schools to, quote, civilize them. Some of these children were as young as three years old. Today, we would call these practices torture. Congress played a role in starting these schools in 1819 when it passed the Indian Civilization Fund Act. By 1925, nearly 61,000 American Indian and Alaska Native children were forcibly taken into boarding schools. Over the course of 150 years, the United States operated over 400 boarding schools with at least 43 in my own state of New Mexico. Our country allowed children to die in these federally funded schools with many buried and unmarked graves. The U.S. Department of Interior found at least 53 burial sites for indigenous children across the boarding school system. It is undeniable that these events have led to intergenerational trauma within our Native communities. We are still uncovering the harm inflicted by these boarding schools. But we must continue the work to uncover the truths of this tragic and shameful chapter in our country's history. H.R. 7 2027 will establish a much needed commission to formally investigate and document the stories of survivors and the human rights violations that occurred against American Indian Alaska Natives and Native Hawaiians at these schools. I'm incredibly grateful for Sharice Davis for bringing this bill to Congress for our consideration. Last Congress in the Natural Resources Committee, we held a hearing and listened to the survivors of the boarding schools. Their stories moved each of our hearts to tears. The committee recognized that every time the survivors have to tell their stories, they are revisiting the trauma they experienced at the boarding schools. I am grateful that the survivors are willing to move us to a place of reconciliation, even though this is a very painful process for them. They reminded us at that hearing, and they've reminded the committee, that the way you resolve historical trauma is to acknowledge it and uncover the truth. As was noted earlier, thank you very much for those statements. I'm very grateful that the Committee on Education and the Workforce has primary jurisdiction over this bill and has taken the lead to move it to markup and hopefully to the floor for a vote. I urge my colleagues to vote for this bill because our Native communities deserve a full accounting of this dark history. We are reminded, I think, as Americans, that it is always through story where we find each other. And whether that finding each other is through pain or through the power of the word and of the ability to connect with each other and understand something that is not of our own history as our own families, but it is of the history of our nation. And so I'm very grateful that we are bringing this bill to this committee for markup. I thank you, Madam Chair. I thank you, Ranking Member, and I yield back. Thank you, Ms. Leisure Fernandez. Uh, Ms. Bonamici, you're recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Madam Chair. I move to strike the last word and speak in favor of H.R. 7227 and the amendment in the nature of a substitute. You're recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Madam Chair. This bill, which I'm honored to co-sponsor, represents a necessary step toward addressing 
longstanding injustices against indigenous students and families under the Indian boarding school policy. We cannot undo the forced removal of native children from their families or the horrific abuse they suffered under the federal government's assimilation agenda. Our job now is to provide the resources and support necessary to bring the victim's stories to light, to educate the public, and to facilitate healing for their descendants and for our nation. This legislation is a foundation for the work still needed to restore and revitalize native culture and language, and to educate students on the atrocities committed against our first peoples. Oregon has an Indian boarding school, Chamawa Indian School. It's in Salem, Oregon, and I visited many times. Over the, year, the school has, over the years, the school has served Native students from across the country. I think of them and their ancestors as we move this important bill forward. I also want to thank, in addition to the bipartisan co-sponsors of this bill, uh, our Secretary of the Interior, our former colleague, Deb Holland. I thank her for her leadership on this important issue. And thank you, Chair Fox and Ranking Member Scott, for moving this important bipartisan bill forward. I urge all, all of my colleagues to support this bill, and I look forward to its swift passage by the full House. Thank you, Madam Chair, and I yield back. Thank you, Ms. Bonamitri. There being no further discussion on the amendment in the nature of a substitute, the committee will move to consideration of amendments. There being no amendments, the question now occurs on the amendment in the nature of a substitute to H.R. 7227. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. In the opinion, Chair, the ayes have it. And the, uh, the amendment in the nature of a substitute um, is adopted. I now entertain a motion to report the bill H.R. 7227 as amended and recognize Mr. Kiley. I move the Committee on Education and the Workforce report the bill H.R. 7227 to the House of Representatives with an amendment in the nature of a substitute and with the recommendation that the amendment be agreed to and the bill as amended do pass. The question now occurs on reporting H.R. 7227 as amended to the House with a favorable recommendation. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. In the opinion, the Chair of the ayes have it and the motion is agreed to. Mr. Scott requests a recorded vote or uh, roll, the clerk will call the roll. Ms. Fox. Aye. Ms. Fox votes aye. Mr. Wilson. Aye. Mr. Wilson votes aye. Mr. Thompson. Aye. Mr. Thompson votes aye. Mr. Wahlberg. Aye. Mr. Wahlberg votes aye. Mr. Grothman. Mr. Grothman votes no. Mr. Fonick. Aye. Mr. Fonick votes aye. Mr. Allen. Aye. Mr. Allen votes aye. Mr. Banks. No. Mr. Banks votes no. Mr. Comer. Yes. Mr. Comer votes yes. Mr. Smucker. Mr. Smucker votes aye. Mr. Owens. Mr. Owens votes aye. Mr. Good. Mr. Good votes no, Ms. McLean. Ms. McLean votes aye, Ms. Miller. Ms. Ms. Steele. Ms. Steele votes aye, Mr. Estes. Mr. Estes votes aye, Ms. Letlow. Mr. Kiley. Aye. Mr. Kiley votes aye, Mr. Bean. Aye. Mr. Bean votes aye, Mr. Burleson. Mr. Burleson votes no, Mr. Moran. Aye. Mr. Moran votes aye, Ms. Chavez Dreamer. Ms. Chavez Dreamer votes aye, Mr. Williams. Aye. Mr. Williams votes aye, Ms. Houchin. Ms. Houchin votes aye. Mr. Scott. Aye. Mr. Scott votes aye. Mr. Grijalva. Mr. Courtney. Aye. Mr. Courtney votes aye. Mr. Sablon. No. Mr. Sablon votes aye. Ms. Wilson. No. Ms. Wilson votes aye. Ms. Bonamici. Aye. Ms. Bonamici votes aye. Mr. Tacano. Mr. Tacano votes aye. Ms. Adams. Ms. Adams votes aye. Mr. Saulnier. Aye. Mr. Saulnier votes aye. Mr. Norcross. Ms. Jayapal. Ms. Wild. Aye. Ms. Wild votes aye. Mr. Mc Ms. McBath. Ms. McBath votes aye, Ms. Hayes. Ms. Hayes votes aye, Ms. Omar. Ms. Omar votes aye, Ms. Stevens. Ms. Stevens votes aye, Ms. Ledger Fernandez. Ms. Ledger Fernandez votes yes, Ms. Manning. Ms. Manning votes aye, Mr. Mervan. Mr. Mervan votes yes, Mr. Bowman. Thank you. 
The clerk will report the tally. Madam Chair, on this vote, there are 34 yeas and four nays. The ayes have it, and the motion is agreed to. H.R. 7227 is ordered reported to the House of Representatives. The chair notes for the record that a quorum is present. I ask unanimous consent that staff be authorized to make necessary technical conforming changes to the bill as amended without objection so ordered. Pursuant to House Rule 11, Clause 2L, I give notice that all members have the requisite number of days to file supplemental minority additional or dissenting views without objection so ordered. We'll now be voting on one amendment to the bill, H.R. 8649, the amendment offered by Mr. Scott, AMD underscore 001. The clerk will call the roll. Uh, 